I played the little taste of this freedom I'm eating, and I fill my life with the words I am singing. It's the veins of the road we're riding along that lead back to the heart that delivers the song. Welcome to the Radiant Health Show with Dr. Christine Horner, your source of information that will help you to achieve extraordinary health and longevity, where each week we bring you a fascinating interview with a leader in natural health, from practitioners in ancient systems of medicine, such as traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurveda, to experts in the latest frontiers of complementary and alternative medicine. You'll be entertained and mesmerized by my guests while learning many tips on how you can reach and enjoy an extraordinary state of health simply and naturally. I'm your host, Dr. Christine Horner, a former surgeon and now an expert in natural health and the author of two award-winning books. The first is Waking the Warrior Goddess, Dr. Christine Horner's Program to Protect Against and Fight Breast Cancer, and my most recent book, which is Radiant Health, Ageless Beauty, a 30-day program for extraordinary health, beauty, and longevity. My guest today is um, Alexander Mostovoy, and he's a really interesting guy. I, you know, I'm thinking I met you probably, I don't know, 15 years ago or something, or paths uh, crossed. Uh, but uh, currently, he is uh, working as a medical thermographer, and um, he also is a clinician, a researcher, a public speaker, and a leading authority on breast health and uh, cancer prevention. He's also the author of the best-selling book, Breast Cancer is a Prevention preventable disease. So, uh, Alexander, thank you so much for being on my show today. Thank you for asking me. And uh, I think it's been more than 15 years. (laughs) 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 Okay, so I'm interested because actually I don't know your backstory. So, uh, you know, I want you to uh, tell my audience, like, um, just give us – you know, how you got to do what you're doing today and uh, how you started out and and, uh, and that kind of thing. <laughs> so I came to a conclusion that nothing happens by chance, absolutely nothing. Um, I have been in clinical practice for many years, practicing homeopathic medicine as the main modality. And at one point in time, one of my best friends who is – an OBGYN, an obstetrician gynecologist, in the same building that um, I had my office in, uh, he storms into my office here in Toronto and says, Alex, you got to look at something like this, and shoves me a piece of paper with some funny images. I said, what is this? He says, it's thermography. I'm telling you, this is the way of the future. I've seen it all, and as a matter of fact, when I was going to medical school in the 1960s, we used to play with this technology at medical school at the University of Toronto. I said, what? I couldn't even pronounce this name, never mind, you know, be interested in it. I said, listen, Alvi, I um, kind of do things the old-fashioned way. I listen to people's complaints. And then I try and figure out what's wrong with them. You, you know, what, what you're showing me is some kind of a techy stuff. I don't even know how to use my VCR. This is uh, how, how far <laughs> back we go. Uh, you know, I need to ask my, my wife, uh, you know, to help me with, with simple things. And, you know, you're bringing this, this technology for me. She says, no, 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 no. I'm telling you this is the way of the future. So I came into thermography as a complete skeptic. Um, and, you know, when people are skeptical, they kind of formulated an opinion already. And it doesn't really matter what, what the facts are. They don't want to be confused. Uh, so, But the more I started looking into thermography, my God, it started to make sense. First of all, what attracted, to me, or what attracted that to me was the fact that it's non-invasive. Uh, then there is no compression, right? There is no radiation. And it's a highly, highly predictable tool at who is at risk and who is not at risk. So the more I started studying 
uh, the more it really attracted me to it. And then I started seeing different possibilities of not just breast thermography, but doing body thermography, looking uh, at um, thermography images of thyroid, for instance, or looking at, at the back, dental, um, all sorts of applications that I never even knew were possible uh, through the use of thermography. And so that's basically kind of what that's that's my story. <laughs> that's, that's what attracted <laughs> me to it. Well, for those uh, who uh, might be listening that maybe never heard of thermography, why don't you uh, give us some details about exactly what it is? Oh well, um, I'll tell you what thermography is not, and then maybe we can we can kind of figure out what thermography is. <laughs> thermography is not it's not kind of a replacement for anything else. It's not a replacement for for any kind of structural tests like uh, mammography, MRI, or ultrasound. Thermography uses, or basically thermo thermography, the name of thermography comes thermometer and thermography, right? So, so you're using um, evaluation of heat patterns uh, that come to, you know, heat comes to the surface of the skin, it radiates uh, from us, and we simply use a technology that's using infrared cameras to capture that heat. So the camera is not a giver, it's a receiver. I always kind of joke with, with my patients that for a change, you guys are radiating us. <laughs> so uh, thermography measures that and it digitizes that so that for someone like myself or you, we can look at that digital image, but actually it's just a bunch of numbers that gives us temperature readings but numbers don't mean that much to us so we have to kind of digitize that into an image and that image we can point and click on different areas analyze this to give us to, to give us an idea what's normal what's abnormal what's high risk what's what's low risk and the, the beautiful thing about thermography is that before there's going to be any change any structural change. In other words, before something grows, usually that's going to have a change on the physiological level. Let me give you an idea or, or an example. So before a tumor grows, it's just like before you build a house. You can't really build a house in the middle of nowhere. You have to have a road to bring supplies there, and you have to have uh, electricity, and you have to have water uh, kind of uh, coming into that area. And then, and only then, once the structure or infrastructure is set up, then you can actually build a house. And the same analogy applies to probably the majority of malignant or, or cancer growth that they need additional blood supply to supply those nutrients uh, to that area. And those nutrients come through blood supply that blood supply will have additional heat. And that's something that we can pick up with thermography. So um, can you just talk a little bit about uh, why someone would want to do thermography versus doing, well, I guess mammography, because that's kind of the, mm -hmm. quotes gold right. standard. <laughs> right. right. Well, you know, not everything that shines is gold. Uh, but, um, <laughs> you know, why, why, why would anyone, first of all, I, I don't think that one replaces the other, you know, we, they are providing different information, but since you're asking, you know, to, to have some form of comparison, um, uh, let me put it to you this way. Mammography maybe is not an ideal tool. Um, and I wish we had something better than that. But my mammography definitely can be used diagnostically to identify lesions in, in the breast, for instance, right? But this is not early detection as we're all led to believe. This is actually late detection. So mammography tells you what already happened and probably has been happening for, I don't know, five, six, seven, up to 10 years before that mass is going to be big enough to be identified with mammography, right? Uh -huh. so it depends, of course, on the rate of growth and, and, and other factors. But generally speaking, 
it's not something that appears overnight. It's something that has been growing from two cells, then they divide and become four cells, and then they divide and become eight cells, and so on and so forth. But that takes time. So by the time you know a mammogram detects kind of an average time lesion, we're looking maybe at, I don't know, eight years, seven years, something like this. Does that mean that someone who goes for a mammogram and gets a negative mammography at year five, let's say, does that really mean there's nothing there? Of course there's something there, we just don't see it. So where thermography comes in, as I mentioned to you before, where thermography comes in is actually, you know, if we can see an unusual blood formation, which is usually asymmetrical, which is usually unilateral, in other words, it's in one breast rather than two breasts, we can suspect, okay, and only suspect that maybe something is going on. So I don't use thermography. Thermography, of course, is non-diagnostic. The only way to diagnose a cancer is to really have a biopsy. But thermography can give you that early warning signal that maybe something is going on and maybe this person is at risk. So if this person is at risk, what do you do? What do I do? Well, we sit down with, with, with people and we figure out how do we lower your risk? I mean, let's look at your diet. Let's look at your psychoemotional uh, um, condition. Let's look at your hormones. And there's so many other variables that we can change and bring this woman from high risk to a low risk situation. So that's where I think thermography really truly shines as compared to I do have breast cancer or I don't have breast cancer. Thermography can identify who is at risk of developing breast disease. So, I mean, in essence, what you're saying is that, I mean, it's really the only preventative, you know, technology we have because everything else picks up something after you already have it, right? Right. So, Absolutely. Um, and then, I wouldn't say uh, that thermography per se is preventative because, you know, thermography per se doesn't do anything. It doesn't prevent it. You know, you still have to do the work, but thermography is an impetus for change because if someone finds out that they're medium or high risk, well, you know, why, wouldn't you want to get this information ahead of time? Why wait to be diagnosed? I mean, at that point, it's no fun for anyone, right? It's no fun right, for exactly. physicians. It's no fun yeah. for, for physicians. But we have wasted all this time by telling people, oh, you don't have a problem. You don't have a problem. Oh, now you have a problem. Why not look at this holistically? And in that sense, yes, preventatively. Let's, let's use medicine to prevent disease rather than to cure it. I'm, I'm right there with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know. <laughs> so, again, uh, for people that, you know, they're, people that are listening here who are completely unfamiliar with this. So so what's involved in, like, if somebody wants to get, um, you know, get one of these scans done, what's involved in, in doing that? Well, it's actually very simple. You know, you, you find a reputable clinic uh, that does thermography. You find out, um, you know, kind of whether or not uh, they're properly trained, who is, who is interpreting their, their exams and all that. What's involved is actually very, very simple. And a lot of women that come to, to our office, and I'm sure yours as well, um, you know, they, you, you can feel kind of that, that anxiety and the sigh of, of relief because they don't know what to expect. But once they go through this process, you know, they simply come in, they, they acclimate for 15 to 20 minutes in a nice uh, quiet room, uh, a technician walks in, uh, it takes their images. It takes just a couple of minutes, um, and and that's it. That's all. So the images is it. it's just a camera, like taking a picture, right? <laughs> right, right, right. It's just like taking a picture, and as I said, you know, they are radiating the camera. The camera picks up all this heat that comes from the surface of their skin. That gets digitized, uh, sent to a remote server. Somebody else looks at them, writes a report. The report comes back, and then they sit down with, with their uh, with their provider or their um, health consultant or their physician, and and they go through the report of findings. And then you know, even if listen, even if you're low risk, okay, um, there's everyone can improve their health. It's not a one way street that you know as you get older you're just going to get sicker and sicker and sicker. I don't believe in this model. 
I, I, I don't think that people should live for forever or could live forever, but certainly we can have a much better quality of life. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to go back to um, when, when you were saying that the first thing is, is that somebody needs to find like a, you know, reputable clinic and, um, you know, person who does images as well as somebody who does the mm-hmm. interpreting. So how, how does somebody do that? I mean, how do you, how do you find somebody and know that research, they're... <laughs> research, uh, <laughs> you know, um, you know, internet is, is a big help. Look, look for someone who's not making these outrageous uh, claims that, you know, it really, really gets my back up when I, when I see someone's claiming that thermography prevents uh, breast cancer. You know, that's an absurd statement. Uh, or, or thermo- you know, if you have thermography, you don't need a biopsy. That's, that's, that's ridiculous. Um, so, you know, again, you know, ask around, you know, see what, what, what other women are going through. Um, you know, um, well, is there like an organization or a website or something that you can look up to see if people are certified? Or There are many organizations and there are many kind of so-called certifications. In the end, thermography is an unregulated field, and therefore, you know, buyer beware, you know. So anyone with kind of a long reputation uh, will be there. Uh, there are a lot of people that may be doing it for a long time, but as I said, you know, they could be doing it wrong all this time too. Um, so, you know, as I said, ask around, ask for 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 um, um, you know their reputation. How long have they been doing this? Where they were trained? Are they a member of uh, of an association, a professional association? What that association is? Is it is it just is it really? An association of of practitioners, or is it just a front for for a, for a company that that promotes demography, right? So um, I don't know if we want to go any further with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just think it's always a difficult thing, you know, for people to know. And so I just wondered if you were involved in any particular organizations that you know, for instance, you would recommend or. Well, you know, you know, I'm a member of um, American Academy of Thermology. Um, I think it's a reputable association that that's not in the pocket of of any other business, right? But many other so-called associations are really kind of just kind of a front for a company that uh, that promotes thermography for different reasons. So. Uh-huh. Okay, Again, so that would be. Yeah, a good I, and I'm source. not saying that these people are not reputable. I'm I'm just saying that there's a little bit of a conflict of interest when when they call this an association. It doesn't mean that it's it's um, not affiliated with the business part of it, right? Right. Yeah, for sure. Now, uh, the the difficult question. So you know, thermography has gotten some bad press, right? Really? And, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the horrific, you know, like uh, Good Morning America stories and stuff. So, um, you know, so so what do you say for people that have maybe seen these, you know, recent stories and, you know, uh, maybe have some concerns? You know, is thermography really a valuable tool or, you know, is it being oversold or, <laughs> or it doesn't work? Or, right, right. Yeah. Right. So, look. In this day and age, um, and I've had kind of personal experience with, uh, you know, a few years back with the media that concocted uh, another kind of negative story about thermography and all that. I don't think that, you know, uh, you know, all these stories or journalism is is really what it's, you know, what what we think it should be, that it should be impartial, that it should present two sides of the story. That the journalists shouldn't uh, have an agenda. Unfortunately, uh, as we all know, um, you know it, that's that's not the case. Okay, so there's usually an agenda, and and I've seen that many many times. You where supposedly a person who's interviewing you already knows the outcome of of the interview, right? Um, as far so, as far as I'm concerned, look, um, you can say whatever you want. Yeah, you know there are multiple published studies. When someone says, "Oh, there's no, it's not reputable. We don't have uh, enough uh, studies in thermography," um, you know, 
we have tons and tons and tons of published studies showing the efficacy of thermography. As far as making crazy claims, as I said, it gets my back up too when, when people embellish thermography and, and say crazy things. You don't have to do that. It's not the latest panacea. You know, it has incredible advantages. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it for the past 20 years. And it has limitations. And, and tell me which technology or, or what test doesn't. I mean, you know, nothing is 100%. But, you know, I've imaged probably by now, you know, close or maybe a little bit over 40,000 women. Uh, and the rate of the so-called, you know, where we miss something. It's not that we really miss because there's an explanation there, you know, if if uh, we have either cold tumors or it's a very, very, very slow-growing tumor or the DCIS, which doesn't really show up well on thermography, and then, it, uh, you know, you say, no, you're low risk, and yet they may have something. Well, again, I, I can go against numbers against MRIs. I can go numbers against mammography where they have false, false negative or false positives, right? Uh, I'm, I'm comfortable with, with all that. As a matter of fact, I think thermography would shine if, if you do uh, kind of a comparative uh, study. Of course, that study needs to be designed properly. But um, no, I, I, I'm not kind of... I'm not really troubled by the negativity because there's a lot of positive there if you look at things. But people have agendas. And, uh, you know, thermography is not patented technology. And it's not really driven by big, big kind of uh, uh, company that has its interest. And it's not part of the medical school curriculum. So, well, you know, uh, you know, if it were, and if we had some big company kind of backing up thermography, I'm sure the press would be very, very positive. We all know. That. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, what's the normal cost? I mean, when you're we're, we've been talking kind of using thermography as mm -hmm. a uh, breast health risk assessment, but it can be used yeah. for many different things, you know, too. Right, um, right. So uh, what, what's the normal cost of uh, thermography? Well, it ranges, right? In, in my uh, kind of uh, clinic, we charge $265. That includes imaging, um, and I, I do the report right away, so, you know, they get a little explanation and, and kind of a, a bit of guidance um, you know, what to do next, you know, whether I'm referring them out or, you know, I'm giving them some form of direction if they need to. And listen, where, how, you know, if somebody is high risk, what do you think happens to them? We immediately escalate and send them for, for structural tests like an ultrasound, MRI, and, and mammography, you know. So I, I, I don't know what, what the problem is, especially when, when it comes to many radiologists that are, adamantly kind of negative well, you know we're, we're sending them back back to them you know especially women that don't want to have mammography and if i tell them listen i wish we had a better test but we don't so i i'm telling you they're not going to biopsy uh, this area based on my report so you do need to to use mammography right now as a diagnostic tool and if i say that to them they will usually listen to me so i'm i'm actually putting the patient back into the system we're not taking anyone out. So what you're saying then is thermography is more of a, like a, a risk assessment uh, tool. You know, if, if I had it my way, thermography would be the primary screening modality, okay? And, and this way we can, we can uh, actually uh, have way more radiation going into people's bodies, and this way we can have way less biopsies and we can save billions and billions and billions of dollars using this model rather than the model that doesn't work, never worked. And in the past 40 years, breast cancer, uh, you know, mortality could continues to, to, to go up and breast cancer incidence can continues to go up. So, you know, you, you keep trying doing the same thing, expecting different results. That's insanity. Mm -hmm. 
It sure is. And with that, believe it or not, we only have like a minute left. So uh, I'll have you on next week so we can continue our uh, discussion and talk about what women can actually do to help to prevent breast cancer. Um, So if you want to go ahead and give your contact information, website. Sure. My uh, website uh, or our website is thermographyclinic.com. It's very simple, and if anyone has any questions, and uh, please don't send me anything negative. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, they can go to the website, and from there they can uh, email if they have questions or any further comments. Great, and I look forward to continuing our conversation next week. Me too. Thanks for joining me on the Radiant Health Show with Dr. Christine Horner. I'm your host, Dr. Christine Horner. Good health can be yours simply and naturally. Download my radio show this week and every week and follow the advice of my expert guests, and soon you'll be experiencing radiant health and ageless beauty no matter what your age. And don't forget to check out my website, drchristinehorner.com, and be sure to sign up for my free newsletter, give me a like on Facebook, and follow me on Twitter so that you can keep posted on all my comings and goings and latest tips and tricks for extraordinary health. My theme song is Beauty Surrounds Us by Jenny Bird, available at jennybird.com, that's J-E-N-N-Y, B-I-R-D dot com.